I just I couldn't believe your response to last week's story time. Like I just I could not believe your feedbacks. Like it, it seriously just like blew my mind. Like for real. Like let, let's just get this video started. Hi guys, thank you all so much for tuning in to my channel. I'm Princess Juana, aka Pastor P, aka Miss P. You choose one and I'll answer. On my channel, we talk about everyday life experiences. We look at the word of God. We do story times. We do vlogs. We do tags. And sometimes we just have a chit chat. So if you're new to my channel, please do me a favor. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any more of my videos. You will be notified whenever I upload a new video. We have a lot of fun on here. We learn a lot. We grow together. Um, I mean, stick around. Definitely become a part of the family. You will not regret it. For my returning subscribers, you guys, you guys are the real MVPs. And I'm not just even saying that like you guys are the real MVPs and I love you all so much okay so let's just get started in this um, video um today's video i'm just going to speak on a few responses and feedbacks that i received from last week's story time where i spoke about a time that i almost died or the time i almost died um if you're new on the channel and you haven't seen that video i'll, I'll try to leave the, the link in the description box below go ahead and make sure you check that out um and this video will make a whole lot more sense to you okay so let's get started so from last week's video first of all you guys okay um i just want to say thank you the response um the the love all of you just reaching out all of you messaging those of you that called um those of you that um, commented um with words of encouragement and stuff like that Thank you. You're so appreciated. Um, I don't take you all for granted. Um, it just shows me how much the PFN family, you know, just how much love we have um, in us. Honestly speaking, um, when I shared that, that video, I wasn't in a position of like a victim mindset or in a position of like a pity party. I shared that story because um, it was a demon that I needed to face and deal with. I genuinely wanted to heal um, from everything that happened, not just even the sexual assault, but the fire, the loss, um, and just everything, you know, that basically happened. Um, and so for me, it was, it was a process in my growth um, that I also felt like, you know what, let me just share my story time um, with my, my PFN family um, so that that way they can also learn a few lessons from, you know, some of the mishaps that have happened to me. And But the, the outpour of love and of support that I received from you guys was truly mind-blowing. And that just shows that, that they, the love is real out there. Um, but then also... The things that I got to find find out about some of my viewers and some of my subscribers, it just it broke my heart. Um, just this week alone, a lot of you reached out to me to just open open up about how you guys went through similar situations, how some of you were um, sexually assaulted for years and years from young age um, ages to some of you in your teenage years. And some of you opened up to me about how you were even raped. Um, and it got so deep where somebody also told me like how they were raped by their grandfather. Um, somebody was, you know, raped by her cousin. Somebody, I mean, it, it's, it blew my mind. And honestly, I'm just so grateful to God that one story that took me 11 years, almost 11 years to come out and speak on the effect that it had on my subscribers, the, except, the effect that it had on my viewers. So just also get y'all started on your journey of healing, on your journey of facing your demons and your fears. Honestly, it blew my mind. And even guys that reached out to me, this one guy reached out to me about how he was raped by his nanny as a kid and how that opened different avenues into his life where he became addicted to sex, 
um, where he lacked trust and respect for women. Um, so in return, he just started using women. I mean, it opened up so many satanic and, and negative and devilish doors in his life. And it just broke my heart. You guys, like, I think I've cried enough tears just this week to last me a lifetime. And it's not even just from... Um, me coming out and, and sharing my stories of some of my struggles um, that I've been through, but from hearing um, you guys' stories as well. I mean, honestly speaking, so some of the things that you go through when you've had to deal um, with, you know, going through something like maybe an abuse, an assault, um, or being raped and stuff like that, is that, um, number one, you're in like an in denial. And you're thinking, wait, did, did that really happen? Did I imagine it? Am I dreaming it? Did it really happen to me? Like, you're, you're really in denial, right? And then you go, you start going through, like, the blame game. And you start blaming yourself. Well, maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's the way I was dressed. Maybe it's because I went over, you know, his house. Or maybe, you know, it's because I'm living with them. Or maybe, you know, you begin to think of different things to blame yourself about, right? You begin to think, you, you know, you're just like, man, maybe maybe I deserve it. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe, But so oftentimes that's not the case. You know, oftentimes that's not the case at all. And then sometimes we move from, you know, um, denial and blaming ourselves to fear, right? Sometimes they will tell you something like, if you tell, nobody's going to believe you. Um, one of my friends that was talking to me this week, she was like, she even come out, she came out years later and she told her father. And her father said to her, no, it's not true, you're lying. He would never do something like that to you. So it's like that fear of... Um, nobody will believe you or somebody will think you made it up or somebody will think you're lying or somebody will look at you like, well, you know, knowing you, you probably deserve that kind of thing. But sometimes until we face those fears, sometimes until we get out of denial to realize that, wait a minute, this did happen to me. This, you know, it happened to me and it is wrong and it is not okay. And then moving past the fact that, no, I am not just a piece of me. I am not just a sex object. I am a woman. I am a human being. And, you know, I shouldn't be treated like that. It is not my fault. And then getting to the point of, okay, fine. People might not believe me. People might think I'm lying. People might think I'm making this up. But you know what? I'm going to face this demon and I'm going to get the help that I need. I'm going to speak out about it. If they believe me, great if they don't that's fine um sometimes it may hurt because you tell your family member or loved ones and they don't believe you that would hurt for me personally i feel like it's better than you keeping it on the inside and it affecting other things and other areas in in our lives there are people that have been sexually assaulted and raped that have ended up being homosexuals um that now hate relationships that don't that can't trust men that can't trust you know women like my guy friend that i was telling you about um that now it has affected other the areas of their lives like their self-esteem their confidence some people it made them timid it made them crawl into you know a shell so we have to come out of that place of overcoming the fear um, and, uh, of thinking you know what maybe people would rather turn around and start accusing me sometimes that might be the case people might think you know try to accuse you for it but you know your truth and your truth is your truth. Don't let nobody take your truth away from you. You know what you went through. You know what that person did to you. Even if nobody believes you, just own your own truth. At the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? And then, that's when you now begin to heal because after you've, you've spoken your, your truth, um, you've sought help, you start speaking to a counselor maybe, um, you, you, you speak to your pastor, maybe you get prayer or help with it. Um, and then you start your healing process. And then one thing I kept hearing over and over this week was, man, it happened to me too, but I guess it's okay. You know, no, it's not okay. I hate the fact that society has normalized certain things. And honestly, I know that it doesn't only happen just in the African community and the African culture, but I'm going to speak a little bit you know, on the African culture because that's what I'm personally familiar with. And I know my American friends might be watching and other races um, and ethnicities might be watching and, and I'm sure you all can relate as well because I'm sure you guys probably go through similar situations. But honestly speaking, it is not okay. In the African community that are all their uncles, older men that are, that are touching young girls inappropriately in Africa and some of them even here in America. You know what I'm saying? Older men and, and like my American friend that told me that her grandfather raped her. That is not okay. And, and we've come to the place of men 
this person has been sexually assaulted, this person has been raped, this person you know, has been uh, molested, this person has been assaulted, then I guess I'm no difference, I guess it's okay, you know, talking to one of the young ladies, she told me, she was like, honestly, after it happened like two times, because it happened to me in a space of, you know, two years, um, but after it happened like the second time, and it seemed like nobody, you know, was listening to me, or seeing the changes in me, I just thought it was normal, that I just, after a while, I was just, I would just give in. And that broke my heart because it is not okay. It is not okay at all. I don't understand. Parents, pay attention. Okay? Because sometimes you will notice the withdrawal signs. Sometimes you will notice the distance, you know, between that friend, between that daughter, between that son. You know, they will begin to pull away. They will begin to get a little bit more shy, a little bit more quiet, a little more timid. Pay attention. And if they come and they tell you that uncle or grandpa or my nanny or auntie or cousin, you know, was touching me inappropriately or they raped me, don't shut them down. A lot of you do that. And there are a lot of grown-ups and a lot of adults that are walking around messed up from things that happened to them and things that were done to them. And they still haven't let it out. And they still haven't told nobody because they've just accepted it as their reality. But we need to heal. You guys, you need to heal from it. You need to to um, pray over it. You need to get the help that you need. You need to confide in somebody. Because one thing I believe is that problems shared are half solved. You cannot believe how many people has reached out to me in just this week to just let out their truth, to just speak to me about the things that happened to them. You know, just to say, you know, thank you for sharing that. You had no idea what that did to me as I watched it. Honestly, I didn't anticipate the effect that it'll have. And here's the thing, whole time, right, there was so much fear in me that, man, you're getting ready to, to, to put your vulnerability out there. You stand the risk of being judged. You know, there's that fear of, wait, what if nobody believes you? But honestly, to my amazement, the feedback that has come, you know, has been mind-blowing. So what am I saying? Sometimes you fear so much that nobody will believe you. You fear so much that you will be blamed. You fear so much that people will accuse you that it's your fault. But it might just be the opposite. You know, they might just believe you if you told. They might just, you know, be there to be that support system for you if only you will let it out. Sometimes a lot of our fears, they have been programmed and built up in our heads. Sometimes a lot of the accusers will tell you, if you tell nobody's going to believe you, it's a lie. Sometimes somebody will believe you. Sometimes mom will believe. Sometimes auntie or grandma or dad will eventually believe you. Not, that's not always the case. Some of them may not believe you, but you never know. Somebody might believe you and somebody might get you the help that you need. But there are a lot of grown people. There are a lot of adults walking around angry, broken on the inside. We've gotten so good at putting on masks. Masks that says to the world that we are okay. Masks that says to the world that we have it all figured out. Uh, masks that says to the world that, you know, we got things under control. Just for certain triggers to be pulled and certain things to happen. For all those things that we've, we thought we've blocked. All those things that we thought we've buried. All those things that we thought is behind us and we've forgotten about for them to just come spilling out again. It's like you cleaning the house. Right, but you got tired in the middle of, of cleaning that you decided to just take a rug or to take something to cover up maybe a stain in the carpet or maybe like a dirty area section in your living room. That dirt, that dirt did not go away. You just covered it up. So it's out of sight, but it is not dealt with. Because one day, let's say when somebody comes or your husband or your, your son or somebody comes and they move that rug, they're going to see that stain. They're going to see that dirt that you were trying to cover up and you were trying to bury. That's what happened when we try to hide certain things that have happened to us or that have been done to us. This video, this season, I just want to encourage us, especially with us going through the pandemic and being quarantined, get help. Let us heal. I said it in the things to do during quarantine video, but I don't think that I said it seriously enough. But let's use this time to heal. It's so important. 
And I'm so sorry that some of you had to go through some of those things. And I'm so sorry that some of you have been hurt and you've never had that listening, you know, ear or that person that would trust you guys enough to, to just allow you to share your truth. Or I'm sorry that you shared your truth, but you got shut down and nobody listened. But you know what? This is the time where you take this season to heal because it's not going to hurt anybody more than it is going to hurt you to continue to hide it to mask it to cover it up because one day one day somebody or something is going to cause that cover up to come out and it's going to be exposed you know you're going to react negatively to somebody let's say um, a guy who would come in now to try to truly love you or a lady who will come into your life now to want to love you and stand with you but because you haven't treated the hurt, the pain, the brokenness, or having healed from that thing that happened to you or that was done to you. Now you're unable to love that person that just want to be there for you genuinely, that just want to love you. And there are sometimes I would hear people would say that I don't even want to get married. Like what if I don't want to get married? I don't care, you know, for a husband or I don't care for a wife. But sometimes it affects different parts of your life that you won't understand. Sometimes we think it's small. And we don't know the simple psychological effect that it has in other it it's had in other areas and aspects of our lives until you get older you find yourself saying nah like guys are not trustworthy no i don't want to get married no um i'm gay i don't want nothing to do with women or i don't want nothing to do with men or you sleep being addicted to maybe sex or you becoming promiscuous and sometimes you don't understand why am i like this why am i always you know can't why can't i be satisfied why am i always seeking after sex and stuff like that but this is a time where you know you have to seek for help prayer speak to your pastor to speak to a counselor speak to a family member you know speak to somebody and start on your healing process honestly you guys we're in this journey together okay you're not alone and I'm just so grateful that now my story my past my journey is being able to just be a blessing to all of you guys I'm so grateful to God about it I'm still going through my process you know and i'm still going through my recovery and i'm still going through my growth i don't know everything just yet all i know is that god has me on a journey and i'm so privileged to have all of y'all in this journey with me as we're growing together and we're moving together and i want all of us to just use this season to heal together so that that way we can come out like the true diamonds that we are every guy every woman that is watching so that that way we can come out stronger because definitely one thing I believe is that what didn't kill us only makes us stronger and little did the enemy know that when we become stronger we coming after him we coming after the kingdom of darkness we coming after the pit of hell we coming after his agents we come in strong and we come in to shut things down and that's on period we come in and we come in hard so we need to heal because we can't go on an attack we can't raise children when we are toxic we can't raise you know we can't maintain or manage our homes as wives or as husbands if we ourselves we don't have the necessary tools if we ourselves we are not in the right mindset if we ourselves we don't know what we're doing if we ourselves all we've been exposed to is just toxic it's just been abused it's just been assault it's just been molestation if that's all we know that's what we're going to input and deposit into our kids into our nieces into our godchildren into our husbands and our wives it's not healthy we need to heal and I'm so glad that a lot of you guys reached out to me this week. Thank you for the love and the support for those of you that sent it. And thank you for those of you that were able to trust me enough to just come to me and open up to me about some of your journeys. It was a really challenging and a growing week. And I'm just so grateful to God for all of you guys, okay? Alright you guys, um, I just wanted to come out here and just respond to some of you guys' feedbacks and responses. God bless you. And I just want to pray for you real quick. I'll pray for all of us. God Thank you for just being God. Thank you for those that are watching me in tears right now. Those that have gone through the rapes, the molestations, the assault, the abuse, the neglect, and whatever else it is that has been done 
to us and that and that that we have gone through in life god in this season always saying is that we finally want to face our demons we finally want to tackle these fears and we finally want to heal and that god you will help us on this path that we are unto recovery and that god we will come out stronger we will come out bolder we will come out more confident in the name of jesus i pray for them as they're watching from america they're watching from kenya from sierra leone from ghana from the uk um from the netherlands from south africa wherever they are watching from oh god i pray for the pfn family that god you will help us to recover and that god you will help us to heal in this season send us the help the listening ears oh god and and and, and the words of wisdom and the godly counsel that we need to grow in this season in jesus name amen and if you're that individual that parent, that grandparent, that uncle, that friend, that that person who has been hurt, who has been abused, who has gone through it, that they come to you to confide in you, to trust in you. Don't be too quick to throw judgments at them. Don't be too quick to shut them down, to tell them, shut up, you don't know what you're saying, you're making it up, you're lying. Don't be too quick to speak. Just, just listen. Just listen and try to process what it is they, that they're trying to tell you. Okay, just listen. And if you listen keenly and you look into certain things, you will find the truth in the midst of what they're trying to tell you. And if you're that individual and somebody comes to you to confide in you about what they've been through and you don't know what to say, I say this with all due respect, just shut up. Just don't say anything. Just be quiet and just listen. Because honestly speaking, like Musa was just there to just hug me as I cried or to go with me to my mother's grave and just stand there with me as I, as I wept. Just, just be there. Sometimes that's all they need, just for you to just be there, for you to, to just nod, for you to just say it's going to be okay. Even if you yourself, you don't believe it, just be there. But not with the neg negativity, not with the judgments. Don't keep beating a dead horse or a weak horse. They're already weak. They're already dead. Okay? So that's just my input, my advice to you guys. Um, I'm going to end this right here. Thank you guys for... Just reaching out to me. I'm grateful. God bless each and every one of you. We're on this journey together. I love you guys so much, okay? Uh, make sure that you guys are staying safe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, you guys. Uh, make sure that you, you know, it just help me for us to grow. Um, don't just come on here and watch the videos and then go away. Give it a thumbs up. Share with somebody because just like how these videos might be helping you, they can be helping so many more people. But a lot of y'all just come on here and just watch and keep it moving. Please subscribe, guys please subscribe 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 and hit the notification bell i'll see you guys in my next video